Hello everybody. This is AK. I'm back. So I read in the, read in the news in the Business Times something about Suntech REIT and the uh, headline says rights issue last priority for Suntech REIT as it targets 100 million dollars in divestments. So rights issue is the last priority and last priority the phrase in inverted commas. Of course, I produced a video on Suntech REIT not too long ago about how I have a smallish investment in the REIT, a legacy position. And um, I said that it's not the same animal as it was when I first invested in it um, more than 10 years ago. And, and I say it has, it has a very high gearing ratio now. And um, in the current environment of very high interest rates and interest rates could indeed go higher, but it's definitely staying higher for longer. Um, Suntech REIT uh, has to raise funds, right? And now it says rights issue is the last priority in inverted commas. So it's a very strange choice of words because if it is a last choice, then it, it should be the last resort and not the last priority. Because priority is something that you want to cover first. So it's a very strange choice of word, but I think that points to uh, how a rights issue is still on the table as a possibility. So if you're invested in Suntech REIT, um, we should be prepared for a possible rights issue. Okay, uh, and another article um, says that MAS, Monetary Authority of Singapore, uh, orders DBS and Citibank to account for the severe service outages uh, last week. And of course, this has to do with their uh, online banking services being disrupted very badly. And I covered the issue when I talk about TB DBS as well how is uh, online services crashed and what it meant for DBS. So I, I think it's only um, uh, reasonable to expect some kind of punishment from MAS and how I say that would affect the CET1 ratio, the common equity tier one uh, ratio for DBS. Uh, but I think that is going to be manageable for DBS. It's just going to lock up uh, some of the money that it finds hard to deploy. Anyway, that was what I said, right? And I still think that's the case, but we have to see what's the um, final verdict from MAS. Okay, so uh, until that is just speculation on my part. Um, then the next thing I want to talk about is the inflation in Singapore. And that's in the Straits Times, the news. It says that Singapore core inflation slows to 3% in September which is good news, right? And But it says overall inflation is up after record COE prices. Right, the Sing dollar is very strong. Uh, we, but that is a double-edged sword, right? I mean, people are going on holidays are happy because they can uh, buy more foreign currencies uh, cheaply. But it also means that it hurts Singapore as a and that's export oriented economy right and uh, frankly overall inflation is up because of record coe prices and most of us don't own cars why should we care right and um that is a non-issue for the majority of singaporeans and like i said a lot of small companies will probably struggle. The larger companies won't. It's just that how I said bigger banks will still do well, right? Even as funding costs catch up, but the smaller banks might struggle a bit or at least not do as well. It's the same rationale, right? And um, the next piece of news that I want to cover has to do with Yang Zijiang Financial. Of course, I made a video about that recently and how I wouldn't touch it with a five feet pole, even though its share price plunged so much and it's, it looks very cheap from a price to book perspective. It's a huge discount, right? A price to book, huge discount. Um, and I say that's because they have a very huge um, 
exposure to the Chinese real estate sector, right? And they re, which, which was what they divulged in an interview, right? So, and in the latest news is that it says Yang Zijiang Financial CEO and Singapore CIO To Tiao Heng resigned. <laughs> that is never a good sign. That is never a good sign. And um, to to people who would like to take a, a, a bit of risk, actually it's not a bit of risk. It's a big, a lot of risk. Um, bottom fishing and thinking that they might get some very uh, outsized returns by buying to Yang Zijiang Financial Holdings. Now, I I think it is a Good idea to size our positions very conservatively. So, because it is very speculative, I mean, you can say that's paying a dividend, right? That's what pay based on past history. Can it continue to pay that dividend? And、uh, of course, we will it actually、uh, see its NAV hold up as well as it did, or would that have? To come down because of asset re re、uh, revaluation, it might be revalued lower. So all those are pertinent considerations. So we have to realize that this is not a simple、uh, investing、uh, investment in、uh, something that we think is undervalued and it's paying us a dividend.、Um, it could be a value trap, and、uh, it is, in my opinion, more speculative than not. Right. Okay, and the、uh, next thing I want to talk about the final thing, and this one is a bit tragic. It says 1.4 trillion dollars lost to scams globally, and Singapore victims lost the most on average. Yeah, Singaporean 的钱很好骗 <laughs> Singapore is very easy to cheat, right? For all the news about how Singapore is、uh, IT savvy and we are most、uh, well developed when it comes to information technology in the region and all that kind of thing,、uh, Singaporean victims、uh, lost the most money to scams on a per person basis, right?、Uh, and Like I said, don't download apps that we don't need, and 不要贪小便宜 If it if it looks good, too good to be true, it probably is. Don't just go for some like free bubble tea or free chicken, fried chicken, and、uh, big discounts and download apps like that. It's,、uh, If suspicious apps, okay, and that's why I applaud the、uh, applaud OCBC for being a pioneer in not allowing、uh, their banking apps to be used if they detect any、uh, unauthorized or、uh, apps which are not、um, mainstream in our phones, right?、Uh, because sometimes we have to be protected against our own ignorance. Right, and that will safeguard our savings. Okay, so that's all for this video. Bye bye.